Hallelujah. Glory be to the living God. I'm sad this dream that I had with y'all. I believe, I do believe with all my heart that it came from the Lord. I have been praying and asking God to use me however he desire. Um, I resolve to surrender it all to the Lord from the depths of my heart. And I told God that I will make myself available to him whenever he see fit to use me. And I meant that when I told God that. And not too long ago, in the middle of my sleep, I had this dream. There will be some who don't believe. But that's okay because as long as I get this off of me, there will be no blood on my hands. And that's what's important to me. Is that by the end of this message, I'll know that I have delivered the word of the Lord. And I pray with all of my heart that you repent. I pray with all of my heart that you get serious with the Lord. You get serious in your walk. That you shift your focus. And that you maintain your ways before the Lord. And remember, remember the Lord. So I had this dream. And in my dream, I was holding this beautiful pie. And it was decorated. Strawberries. It was a white, white on top, strawberries. It had sprinkles. It had cool whip. It was beautiful on the top. And when I had the pie in my hand, I took the pie and I threw it against the wall. And when I threw this pie against the wall, it stuck against the wall and black goo started coming out of it and it started sliding down the wall and all you could see the trail left behind it was this this nasty black goo that was on the inside of this pie and after I seen this you know I kept saying what is this it looked it tasty on the outside. It looked it, it was pleasing to my eyes. I wanted to eat it, but I had no clue that on the inside of this pie was this nasty black goo. God said to me, this is the condition of my church. I got up, came to the word. I've been in Revelation, Romans, 2 Corinthians, I marked, and I'm going to share these scriptures with y'all. But the condition of the church, and I'm not talking about everybody. There are some who are faithful. There are some who are still striving every day. There are some who are still pressing in, who are still drawing closer and closer to God, who still have that fire for God, who still in love with the Lord and in love with his word. But there are some who just, they don't care anymore. They've grown weary and waiting for him to come. They become like the one in G that Jesus talked about in Matthew. You know, the servant in their heart, they say the Lord has delayed his coming. So they went back into the world. And, and eating and drinking with the drunkard. They become like the five foolish virgins. They lamps and went out. Knowing that the bridegroom is still coming. My friend, now is the time to get more serious than ever before. I know we've been here for a long time. Jesus is coming. But his coming now is nearer than it ever was before. The Bible tells us that the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. As some men count slackness, but he's long-suffering, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That is why he haven't come back, yet he's giving people time to repent of their sins. He's being merciful. He's being long-suffering. He's giving the backsliders time to come to their senses. He's giving that homosexual time to repent of their homosexuality. 
is giving the adulterers time to repent of their adultery. He's giving the world time to repent because he don't take pleasure in the death of the wicked. The Bible says he would rather all men to be saved. And that's why he sent out servants like me to preach the truth to you, to warn you, to tell you to repent and come out of your sin. The Lord wants everybody to be saved. And sadly, many that's saved is drawing back. The Lord said, if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. It's better to not have known the way of righteousness than to have known it and turn from the holy commandment delivered unto you. So look what the word says in the book of Romans chapter 12. I beseech you, brethren, uh, verse 1, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy Acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So the Bible said, uh, the Lord said, I don't want you to be conformed to this world, but I want you to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. He wants us to renew our mind daily by his word. He said be transformed. Why? Because we can be easily uh, programmed by the things that we watch, by the places that we go, by the people that we hang around with. That's why the Bible say even communication corrupt good manners. That's why the Lord said in 2 Corinthians 6 to come from amongst them. Don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers, but you got to come from amongst them and be separate, saith the Lord. He said, don't touch the unclean thing, and then I receive you and be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and my daughters. So he's telling us to be separated. That's his standard of holiness. We got to be set apart. But sadly, a lot of Christians look so good on the outside, but inside you're just full of black goo. Uh, Jesus say, dead men, bones. There's no life in you. There's no life in you. You're spiritually dead. You're no longer walking in the spirit no more. You're walking in the lust of the flesh now. So the Lord said, don't be conformed to this world. You got to get rid of the distractions in your life and get along with the Lord. You got to get rid of them things that's distracting you, that's hindering you in your walk with God. Ain't nothing worth going to hell for. Nothing. Nothing is worth going to hell for and nobody is worth going to hell for. And we got to come to this reality, y'all. In the book of Revelation... All throughout Revelation, God always began telling his church the good things about them. He, he tell them the good things about them. Look at Revelation 2. He said, Until the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things said he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walked in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. He said, I know your works. And your labor and your patience and how you cannot bear them which are evil and you have tried them which say they are apostles and are not and you have found them liars and has borne and has patience and for my name's sake you have labored and you have not fainted these are the good things god say that i that i see you do that i've seen you do then he says nevertheless i got something against you because you have left your first love. You're doing these works for me. You're looking holy. You're going to church. You're faithful to the church. You're looking good. You're talking about me. He said, but you left your first love, but I don't have your heart. That There's something else that has your heart other than me. Then he said, remember therefore from whence thou art fallen. You have failed. You have fallen. 
He said, and repent. And do the first works, or else I will come unto you quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of its place, except I repent. And he said, if you don't repent, I'm going to get rid of you. Even though I see the good things that you've done for me, I still don't have your heart, the Lord says. I don't have your heart. Something else has your heart. Something else has your attention every day. Something in the world or somebody. And the Lord said, if you don't repent, then I'm going to get rid of you. Look what he says in Revelation 3. He said, verse 15, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou art cold or hot. He said, I see everything that you're doing. And I know that you ain't cold or hot. I know that you can't seem to make up in your mind whether you want to serve me or not wholeheartedly. He said, I wish that you would make your mind up. So then, verse 16, because thou art lukewarm, he said, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. So you, so since you can't sing to make your mind up, he said, I'm going to make it up for you, and I'm going to get rid of you. I'm going to spit you out of my mouth because lukewarmness make him sick to his stomach. Maybe that secret sins in your life that God is seeing, and he's telling you to get rid of them. Reach out and seek them now while there's still mercy. Why he's still pouring his grace out. Why he's still warning you. The kingdom of heaven, repent. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. He's still within your reach. Reach out to him now like never before. Well, how do I reach out to him? By praying. Confessing the things that you're doing. Asking God to deliver it, to take you away, take it away from you. Asking him for a new heart, a new mind. Ask him to set you on fire again. Go back to the old worship songs that you used to listen to. Get down on your knees like you used to. Cry out to God like you used to when you was in that shower alone. Sing hymns to him like you used to. Get in that word like you used to. Watch them biblical movies that you used to watch. Cut them people off. That's drawing you into the world. They on assignment from the devil to hinder you. You got to make it up in your mind that I'm going all the way with Jesus. Now ain't the time to backslide. And this is what the Lord has given me, my friend. And I pray to the Lord God that you repent of your sins. I pray to the Lord God that you get serious with the Lord. The Lord is merciful. He said in 1 John 1, 9 that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He said in Hebrews 8, 12, I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember them no more. You won't even remember your sins no more if you repent from the depths of your heart. He said, I take that stony heart out of you and I give you a heart of flesh. And I put my spirit on the inside of you. The Lord want to make you a new creation. And he want to help you live holy until he come back. I've been serving the Lord for seven years. The Lord been keeping me. Yeah, I made mistakes along the way. I made bad choices. But I've had, I've had to repent over and over and over again. It's not about how many times you fall, my friend. It's about how many times you get up and you keep pressing. And we have to be like Paul in this walk. I don't, I, I don't count myself to have apprehended. He, he said, I know one thing for sure, though. I'm forgetting those things that's behind me, and I'm pressing forward toward the mark of the prize of the high calling in God. You see, because Paul killed Christians. He was a murderer. But he became one of the greatest apostles God ever chose. 
And he said, I got to forget that stuff that's behind me. And I got to press forward. And that's what we got to do in our walk, my friend. Repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Y'all be blessed.